tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, today we start with four simulations. Let me roll the tape. It is something falling down and changing its structure quite dramatically. This a little bit less. This one even less. It stays pretty much intact. And uh, this one is uh, the most perfect one. Now let's slow motion it and you see here is a real problem which persists until the very end of the simulation even when the object falls further down. Second attempt we also get a problem right here you can see it on the left hand side a penetration of the inner skin of that object it penetrates the outer skin and these problems do not occur in this simulation and in the last simulation. We're dealing with N cloth today and uh, only with one pull down menu. Cool, huh? It's so crucial for self penetration of objects in N cloth simulation scenarios. Now, here's a brand new scene, and we create an object which has two, well, sort of two skins. Let's go to one of the orthogonal windows, for example the front one, and create a curve. The curves and surfaces are right here. And I use this tool here, and I press and hold the key X, so I snap the first point to the grid. You see it right here. And I do the same right here. I snap it with the key X pressed to the grid, so I have a like a horizontal line. If you don't see it in yellow when you try this out, but in, uh, in, in uh, violet color or whatever, uh, this has to do with my settings here. So then I walk up like this and I make a little opening here. And of course, while creating curves, you can navigate the scene so you can get closer. And I more or less use the same amount of points when and press enter when I go f uh, further down, down again. So this is basically my structure. Now always when you create an object from curves, go back to the curves and just modify them a little bit. And with the cursor keys you can move from one CV as they're called to the next one. So I'll move this one up, move this one up, move this one further here this is okay, this is okay, they're all okay here. I can make it a little bit thinner and even thinner. And this one needs to be lifted up so they don't penetrate. And further down, actually I can snap this to the grid so I um, have a um, confined surface just like this. And press F8 again so I'm in object mode. Now we go to the perspective window here uh, where we have our curve and I scale it a little bit down because cloth simulation has to do with the units here uh, and um, this would be more normal like a couple of centimeters high. And now I use this icon here. You also find it under you need to be under modeling and then surfaces and revolve. So I'm doing a revolve which leads us to this surface. And as you can see it has an inner and outer shell so to say. And uh, it's quite perfect really. Now this cannot be transformed into an end cloth. I mean ceramics don't are not ideal for end cloth anyway but I want to show you this example with end cloth. And the point is um, that NURBS surfaces are wonderfully round and smooth etc but they cannot work in the N world. And the N world is here under FX you see the N particles, fluids, N cloth, N hair, N constraint etc. So I need to bring it into the polygon world and to do this I go to modify and convert and I convert the NURBS to polygon 
And uh, I use quads now because these are quads and not triangles really. And I just leave the settings as they are. Now I hide with the key H, I hide that NURB surface. So, and actually I can hide the curve as well. And this is a polygon surface now. And it actually doesn't look too bad. What I can always do is uh, for that purpose, I need to go back to modeling, go to mesh and then read to apologize. And uh, this gives me a very, very nice layout of the UVs here. And uh, it's a very crude uh, object really in terms of polygons. You see the sharp edges here. So a NURB surface is always more elegant, but this can be transferred into the N world now. So with this selected, to, I create an N cloth now, create N cloth. Now it's cloth and for cloth you need to zoom out or, p or dolly out because uh, it falls down. It has gravity. And uh, as you can see here, um, pretty soon, right here, you have this penetration. The inner skin penetrates the outer skin. Let me go to right mouse click, cached playback, and I cache the playback. That initiates the blue line and the red line, and the red line shows me that we're doing a simulation. Now we can scrub back and forth like this. So this is a really bad penetration of the inner skin to the outer skin because of uh, the dynamics of this motion here. Now let's stick to frame 34 and actually I want to render it so I create a light, an area light, untick normalize and I change the exposure to 1. That gives us a very nice soft area light. When I render it, that's what it looks like. Now I need a little bit more light in the environment, so I create a light, a sky dome light. And I don't want to see it in the background, that's why I go to the visibility and use that slider to slide it back to zero here, the camera, so I don't see that white or whatever it is, the color is currently white. Uh, but uh, here I have the intensity, which is 1 by default. I reduce it to 0 0.2, for example. When I render the object now, I get this very nice layout here. And um, I don't see, in the rendering, I don't see the penetration that dramatically. And that um, can be, well, solved by creating a new material. And I create an Arnold wireframe, a different shader. And now I see that there's a problem here. I keep this image by clicking on this icon here. So it's here, so I can compare it to the next one. Uh, now I will show you what this tutorial is about. We click on end cloth and here you have collisions. If that sec section is not open, just open it. If you want to get rid of the simulation because it takes too long or whatever and you want to do different things, just disable it by unticking enable. But collision is interesting because collide and self-collide means this object collides with its, uh, itself. That's why the inner part of that shell doesn't really go far out. Uh, it feels the outer shell, but it penetrates it a little bit. And uh, that's because we have the self-collision flag set to vertex. And the vertex is the point of the polygon world. Each polygon is defined by a set of vertices and these vertices are calculating the simulation currently. Now uh, check out this, we're at frame 34, the whole red line is uh, done, I can reduce this a little bit here, just like this, 34 is here, um, and now I use the pull down menu and I change vertex to vertex and edge. So it respects in the simulation, it re, uh, Maya now respects the vertices and the edges. That means not only the points, but also the connections between the points. When we do this, the red line down there at the bottom will recompute the simulation. It's a little bit slower than before. And you see frame 34 now 
is much more intact. When we render it now, we get this object. When we use the vertex face, it's even more precise. So it takes even longer now. If you have a complex geometry, this will take even much even longer. You can have a coffee between in the simulation of uh, 40 frames, for example. But uh, this is all right, and it looks basically the same as before. We render it again, and it looks very good. And the last thing, and now watch the simulation time at the bottom when we go to full surface, which is the most precise way of simulating such a thing. Very slow. So it calculates the gravity for our object in respect of all parts of the geometry, the surface, inner and outer part of the surface. And once it lands here, 34, we'll see the actual result. Just in a second now. That's what we get. We can render it again. And this is what it looks like. Here you have the self-penetration, really bad. Here it's more or less gone. Maybe it is gone completely. And here we have a very intact surface, which looks quite a bit like the original one before it uh, fell down. Let's go back to Vertex, because that simulates very fast. Here you see the self-penetration again. Modeling and mesh and smooth that mesh. New calculation here. Uh, just using one subdivision more, so uh, it is more complex, of course. Uh, this is what it looks like, and uh, self-penetration quite a bit. And uh, when we go to Vertex Edge, it's gone. Now let's um, refine it even further, smooth. Now it takes longer here to calculate, but it's uh, intact. And when we, we need to pick the cloth here, we go back to vertex only. Very fast simulation. We have this quite harsh penetration of the inner shell to the outer shell. And something is happening up here as well. So let's have a look inside now. Or over here. Here you see that big problem. And when we go to full surface, and that's a nice thing. We could scrub back and forth now once the simulation is done. And when we stick to one frame, we can really compare it because the gravity affects the different calculations more or less the same in the same way. So they fall as the same amount of um, centimeters. So we always catch it in this view here. And this is perfect. So it depends on your geometry, the complexity of the geometry, and many other factors, by the way. For example, under dynamic properties, you find the properties of that cloth. And uh, if you have a stretch resistance which is very low, uh, the whole simulation goes differently. You can see that this is quite a change here. When I raise the stretch resistance to uh, a high value, See, the calculation goes like this, and it's basically not stretching at all. So this is a, a, that's a different uh, topic uh, for another tutorial, I guess. But I wanted to point you to the self-collision flag, vertex, vertex edge, vertex face, and full surface. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.